So moving on from that, uh, fast food times and takeaways. Plan. You need to make sure that you plan. As Jeremy said yesterday, the biggest time-consuming part of flipping is planning your videos. The actual doing of the recording and the uploading and pushing it out, that's not much time at all. But the planning, which we're doing anyway for a lesson, that takes time because you need to know what the concept is for the video. You need to know how you're going to explain it. Have I got all of my props? Do I have all of my information? Does my video have enough battery? Do I... The planning is the big thing. And if you get that right, and you will find that you get into a bit of a rhythm with your planning, then your planning time drops down a little bit, particularly as you then get to the next year. You get to that year, I've already done that video. I don't need to plan for that video again. Maybe just re-watch it, make sure it's still what you want for that topic. Collaborate. There's nothing wrong, and I've seen it done, with doing team teaching videos. If you've got a webcam, two of you can sit in front of the laptop just as easily as one of you. So if there's a topic that one of your colleagues is really passionate about, invite them in. Get them involved as well. Experiment and iterate. Set before. Try tools out. See what works, see what doesn't work. If you don't like the video, if, it, if you think it's actually not usable in the classroom, dump it, have a crack at another one. The more you do the videos, the more comfortable you'll get and the better the videos get. I look at my first ones, and I'm sure Heather and Jeremy do as well, and it's just like, oh, yeah. they're <laughs> horrible. I look at it and I cringe. I was, as Jeremy said yesterday, I was super formal, super professor mode. Mm -hmm. There was no personality at all. They're garbage. But you've got to start somewhere. And share. Push them out online. Share them on YouTube. Connect with other, other educators, whether it's in your school, across, across the state, or somewhere else in the world. Share your resources, share your experiences, and share your failures and your successes. And connect. Twitter, huge, huge fan, you may have gathered that. <laughs> it's, I feel it's the best source of professional learning because I can get it when I want it, when I need it. And it's free, which is the bottom line for all of us, I think. And don't forget that that is not success. I'm sure if you spoke to Heather and Jeremy and Joel Sparanza and anyone else who's actually done any kind of flipping, this is not what success looks like when it comes to flipping your classroom. It's more like this. You might take three steps backwards after you've taken two forwards, but you'll get there eventually. As long as you're constantly trying, experimenting and iterating, you will eventually get there and you'll probably reach a point where you know, I'm pretty happy with that now. One of mine was when we were doing this activity, yep. um, like a lot of us were just like, I, I found there was lots of ideas just through the examples that you had there. Yep. So I saw uh, lots of people sort of taking down lots of those different ideas. Probably what we need to do now then, and going away, is pick from all those lists of the different options for the presentation to mm -hmm the different options for capturing and for Definitely. hosting and then like sort of pick out from that yeah. which ones are going to suit us. So have a think, so yeah. if, you, if that's all you've done is copy down what I had for that, take that home, think about the tools that I've talked about, that Heather and Jeremy have talked about, that you've explored over the last couple of days and redo that for you in your context. Mm -hmm. Just get you thinking and starting to plan a little bit more concretely, I guess, about how you're going to fit. But I thought of that as an activity to try and conceptualise the different aspects and what's going to suit you is like a really good way to put it out there so that you can work out what's going to be the best tool for what you're trying to do. Yeah, thanks. Any other questions for Brendan? I'm, I'm just the name of the uh, very expensive uh, program. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cam Camtasia. Camtasia, yeah. It is. Well, I, I saw the price tag initially and I blocked. I went through two or three email addresses using the trial version. <laughs> um, but I got sick off the watermark. And at the end of the day, I, I found I was using it all the time and using a lot of the features, not just one or two, but using a lot of the features. So I thought, you know what? If I'm going to be going down this flipped learning road, I need a tool that's going to support me. Uh, and yeah, I felt yeah. I understand that probably Camtasia is more user friendly, but 
D, T, teachers of BEC teachers get the entire Adobe Creative Suite for like $13. Really? I just like that. Premiere. There you go. Premiere Pro. There's a learning for me. Oh, oh, sorry, give me a big one. So the Adobe, so as DEC teachers, yeah. through the portal, yeah. the software purchasing section, we can get the entire Adobe Creative Suite for, it's in the teens, it's like 13, 14 dollars. That retails for three or four grand. Mm -hmm. And includes the entire suite. And Premiere Pro is their video editing software. It is professional. So it will be very daunting or intimidating to someone who's not familiar with it. Yeah. And Camtasia did seem a bit more user friendly, but it's like yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, look, if, if I'd known that was there, I probably would have gone that option and explored that option before I shelved yeah. that out. Can um, I add something here? Yeah. Uh, it is available through UVM, so if you copy your technology okay. um, school and you have a DC laptop, you can get it on that. Okay, my my DC laptop. I mean, most of the money you have to buy it. Yeah, most of the money you have to buy it, but you can get it on DC laptop. We got the same situation in South Australia. So our school has the Adobe suite, and then they put it onto all of our staff laptops. So we've got it. We've got it there too. But guess what? Camtasia will do is you do your screencast and your editing with the same program. Whereas if you use Premiere Pro, you do your screencast with another tool first, sure. then you put it into that, so it's just like a couple of extra steps. So the Camtasia, you can do your screencast, your editing, your interactivity in the one program. Yeah. It also lets you upload straight from Camtasia into YouTube, uh, Google Drive, and something else. I can't remember the other one is good stuff. So it is a really flexible, and it is a very user-friendly tool. Um, but yes, you have to press go. Yeah. So. Thanks very much, Brendan.